everyone, Kate here, and this week we will be discussing 1920s mosquito repellent recipes. I'm answering the questions nobody was asking. <laughs> now I did look at a few different pharmaceutical books in the research for this video, however for simplicity's sake I'm just going to be focusing on the Druggist Circular Formula book from 1920. I picked this particular publication as it features a wide range of different bug repellent options, and also seemed quite in line with other books in this time period. The recipes and the ingredients were, were pretty standard. <sighs> mosquitoes. Now, mosquitoes were, and still are, carriers of various diseases, as well as just being incredibly annoying. <laughs> To avoid the threat of itchy bites or more serious maladies such as malaria, people in the 1920s could turn to their local pharmacy to pick up one of a variety of preparations aimed at discouraging the unwanted affections of those pesky little insects. Nowadays one of the active ingredients in a lot of commercial bug sprays is DEET. However, DEET wasn't available in bug sprays until about the 1940s. So in earlier decades, such as the 1920s, they had to rely on other ingredients, mostly of a natural variety. Keep in mind that natural is not always the same thing as safe. Just, just putting that in there. <laughs> Essential oils were a popular choice, with a few common ones being peppermint, lavender, eucalyptus, Penny Royale, and that still famous bug deterrent, Citronella. These were typically used in very high concentrations. Essential oil safety was not high on the list of priorities for those 1920s pharmacists. The goal here was not to create an all-natural, eco-friendly bug spray. No, the goal here was to create a very strong concoction that would have an odor that would be offensive to the widow mosquito noses. Do mosquitoes have noses? They have, like, they can perceive smells. Okay, I'm gonna Google that. Give me a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> mosquitoes do not have noses per se. They can detect scent, but they don't have, like, little, little noses. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> no little noses on the mosquitoes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Back to the formulas. <laughs> Here is an excerpt to explain how some of these highly scented products were used. Spirit of camphor rubbed on the face and hands, or a few drops on the pillow at night, will keep mosquitoes away for a time. And this is also a well-known property of Pennyroyal. Neither of these substances is durable. That is to say, a single application will not last through the night. Oil of peppermint, lemon juice, and vinegar have all been recommended, while oil of tar has been used in regions where mosquitoes are especially abundant. Oil of citronella is one of the best substances to be used in this way. The odor is objectionable to some people, but not to many, and it is efficient in keeping the mosquitoes away for several hours. The best mixture tried by the writer was sent to him by Mr. C. A. Nash of New York, and is as follows. Oil of citronella, one ounce. Spirit of camphor, one ounce. Oil of cedar, half an ounce. Ordinarily, a few drops on a bath towel hung over the head of the bed will keep the common house mosquitoes away. Where they are very abundant and persistent, a few drops rubbed on the face and hands will suffice. Even this mixture, however, loses its efficiency towards the close of a long night. It is the habit of the yellow fever mosquito to begin to bite at daylight. That time, the average person is sleeping very soundly, and the effects of the mixture will usually have passed largely away. It follows that in the southern states, where this mosquito occurs, these protective mixtures are not supposed to be as effective as they are in the north. As a matter of fact, however, this last mixture, could it be applied shortly before dawn, 
would be as effective as under other circumstances. Now, there are just too many, like, really interesting sounding recipes for me to bother reading them all out loud. I won't bore you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be incredibly tedious. But here is a quick slideshow of some of the more interesting ones so you get an idea of the different ingredients that were commonly used. And yes, they do call some of these recipes mosquito chasers. <laughs> I just think that's really cute. It's not a bug spray, it's a mosquito chaser. Run, little mosquitoes, run away! <laughs> I'm chasing you! <laughs> In addition to topical preparations, you also had things like mosquito pastilles. These were rather poisonous little cones that were burned inside to kill basically any insect in the room. I suspect a lot of these recipes were actually probably pretty harmful to humans as well as just the mosquitoes, and in all fairness they do mention to well air out the room after burning. The, these would have created some um, potent fumes. I think probably the modern equivalent to these would be those little bug coils. I don't know if they still sell those. I haven't tried to buy them in years, but you, they were like little coils that you lit on fire and you, you burn them outside. You were, not, you were not sitting in a closed little room inhaling these things, but they kind of burned around in a, in a coil and were supposed to deter, deter mosquitoes. I don't know if those are still a thing. I, I remember those from childhood uh, camping trips and things. <laughs> Now, just reading recipes is all well and good, but you don't really get the full experience unless you try to make some of these things yourself. So I did. <laughs> I've picked three recipes that are both relatively simple to make and relatively harmless. That, that last one was kind of important. <laughs> I also tried to pick recipes that were fairly varied in terms of their composition. They all have different ingredients and they have different application methods. Now, before we begin, I feel obligated to put a little safety warning here. As I said before, mosquitoes can carry all kinds of nasty little diseases. And big diseases. Diseases, anyway. Homemade bug spray of any sort is not guaranteed to be anywhere near as effective as a commercial product. Especially one of the super chemically ones containing DEET. However, I am a special case because I am allergic to commercial bug spray or, well, chemically sensitive. I have a chemical, di doctor diagnosed chemical sensitivity. So I can't use commercial bug spray. So I didn't see any harm in me trying these out. I mean, the mosquitoes are gonna bite me anyways. I might as well give it a shot and see if any of these things actually work. <laughs> However, I can't in good faith recommend that anybody else make these recipes. As I said, I'm a special case. Don't make these and forgo real bug spray and then get bit and they get a terrible disease. That would make me sad. And probably liable, so don't... <laughs> no. This video is purely for entertainment purposes. Be safe out there. Okay, with that necessary disclaimer out of the way, let's jump into the recipes. The first one I'm going to try is made by mixing one teaspoon each of castor oil, alcohol, and lavender essential oil. I kind of suspect this one is going to be terribly unpleasant to use. Castor oil is a very thick, heavy, 
almost sticky oil. And I don't think mixing it with alcohol is really going to make it that much uh, more pleasant on the skin. This is a topical preparation. Uh, th these are all topical preparations. They're all different formulas, but they are all just like you, you put them on. For my next product, I mixed 14.4 grams of starch with 31 drops of eucalyptus oil. The original recipe actually had a mixture of talc and starch, but I've had to eliminate the talc just out of safety concerns. Talc is one of those like eh, products. The last recipe I tried was actually more of a amalgamation of a few recipes rather than anything directly out of the book. I wanted to try one of their citronella based spray products, but I know from experience too much citronella gives me a terrible headache. So instead, I took inspiration from the essential oils used in the recipes in the book and came up with my own blend. Into one ounce of alcohol, I added 30 drops of citronella essential oil, 30 drops of peppermint essential oil, 30 drops of cedarwood essential oil, and two drops of camphor. Now there's some safety concerns about camphor. It was used in a lot of old recipes. It is still used in things today, but I kept it fairly low amount just to be on the safe side. I'm also going to be applying all these products outside. I'm not going to be breathing them in in a, like a closed indoor environment. I know cedarwood also gives me a headache. I know some of these essential oils do do cause headaches if you breathe too much of them in. So I'm going to be applying and wearing all of these outside protecting myself and my lungs and my cat's lungs and all the lungs. <laughs> Except the mosquito lungs. <laughs> if they get close enough, it's their problem. <laughs> Having made these products, I'm going to bring all three up to a week-long trip up to my grandmother's cottage and give them a thorough test out in the woods. I haven't actually tried them as of filming this part here, but I will insert some footage and a little voiceover to explain how it went. So things didn't go quite according to plan. I did bring the mosquito repellents up to my grandmother's cottage, and I did try to test them out. Unfortunately, likely due to a lack of recent rainfall, there just were none of the usual mosquitoes flying about. I really tried to get bit. I did. <laughs> but as they just weren't there to bite me, I can't actually report how effective these products were in a field test. I can, however, review the application methods and what they were like to use. Let's start with the liquid lavender product. This was, as expected, very unpleasant. Castor oil is a sticky, heavy oil, and it left a tacky, greasy layer on my skin after application. I can understand how this would help the product stick to the skin and remain effective for a longer period of time. But it was just so awful that I really can't recommend it. This oily problem also means that it wouldn't be possible to use this product underneath clothing. Now mosquitoes like to bite me through my trousers, so this product just wouldn't protect against that. Scent-wise, it mostly just smelled the lavender, which was nice. Uh, that's probably the only good thing I can say about it. Next up was the eucalyptus powder. This went on nicely, just like a body powder. However, it didn't leave much of an odor behind. As I said before, I didn't actually find any mosquitoes to test this with, but I highly doubt this product would be strong enough to do any real good. This is also rather messy to apply and would be very difficult to use underneath clothing without getting powder all over everything. The last product was my essential oil spray. I chose to spray this repellent directly on my clothing instead of topically, as it was pretty potent. I do typically do this with any essential oil bug spray to avoid any possible skin irritation because I do tend to be a little on the sensitive side. A spray type application it really is the nicest way to apply mosquito chasers, and they can cover a larger surface area more easily. The scent reminded me of 
Well, mostly just of citronella. <laughs> Big surprise. It seemed comparable to other essential oil bug sprays I've tried in the past, and I would suspect it was the most effective of the three. Or would have been had there been any mosquitoes flying about to repel. All in all, this last recipe was by far my favorite, and the only one I see as being a real possibility. Maybe one day I'll get to actually test it out. <laughs> Well, that was interesting. I hope. I don't really know because as I said, at this point I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what I said there, so I hope this answered all your questions about 1920s mosquito recipe formulations. <laughs> nobody was asking. Nobody <laughs> Nobody was interested. Sometimes I just get excited about things and need to make a video. <laughs> Anyways, as always, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! This video is made possible through the generous support of my Patreon members. Thank you. Cat's looking at me funny. <laughs> She's clapping for the audio sync. Oh man. <laughs> I think this dress clip is too heavy for this top. It keeps like wanting to fall down. Should be up more like off the shoulders. There we go. Okay, with that necessary declaim okay, with that necessary disclaimer declaimer. Disclaimer. Speak properly. Use your words. Bzzz. Mosquitoes. <laughs> what? Bzzz. That's my that's my mosquito impression. <laughs> can you tell I'm tired? I think I get stupid when I get tired. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Just looking over at the sound wave. <laughs> like that sound makes a really interesting pattern. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Okay. I'm running out of time. I gotta get this done. <laughs> Stop making mosquito noises and get back to work. <laughs>